The House Administration Committee hosts a hearing to examine the reach of so-called Zuckerbucks on U.S. elections. Here's One America's Chloe Hoxwell. From excessive mail-in ballots without a clear chain of custody to the prosecution of political opponents, a press acting as the arm of one political party, and floods of funding from special interest groups. This was the focus of Wednesday's House Administration Committee hearing looking into election confidence and private funding. The chair of the committee, Brian Stile, explained the widespread ramifications of private funding to elections administration. Elections are partisan, but elections administration should never be partisan. Among the witnesses was research director for Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty, Will Flanders, who pointed out hypocrisy on the left. The prospect of private funding of elections ought to be of concern to voters across the political spectrum. Take any of the conservative boogeymen of the left, the Koch brothers, for example, and imagine they're sending money directly to election officials almost entirely in conservative-leaning areas of the nation. I feel confident in predicting that the same folks who are now complacent uh, would be complaining loudly about the injustice of it. Another witness, the Federalist Editor-in-Chief Molly Hemingway, broke down the myriad of problems within the U.S. election system. Instead of having election administration that is rigorously nonpartisan and impartial under the law, we have allowed the private takeover of government election offices by partisan oligarchs and their armies of activists who use those offices and their authorities to tilt the election toward favored candidates. The hearing mostly centered on grants that the Center for Tech and Civic Life and related groups provided to state and local election offices in 2020. And what did CTCL end up recommending? Scaling up the voting process by mail? Yes. And even recommending election staffers? Yep. Staying on the topic of CTCL's recommending experienced election staffers, in Green, Bay, in Green Bay, CTCL recommended an election staffer from New York. Is that accurate? He was, yes. But in Northeast Wisconsin, it's a pretty big place. Uh, why didn't CTCL have anyone in mind with experience in the state of Wisconsin? Why do you think they brought someone in from the state of New York? I don't know, but he had access to he, he asked for and received access to quite a bit of privileged yeah, information. So Meta founder Mark Zuckerberg and his wife Priscilla Chan donated more than $300 million, which flowed disproportionately to Democrat-leaning jurisdictions. They, they, they go to these counties and they say, we're, we're going to help you. We're going to provide you with in-kind contributions. And by the way, we're also going to give you an improvement plan for your office. Now, again, outside groups should not be trying to run the government election offices. That's a simple principle. There are currently 27 states which prohibit private funding of elections administration. There are others with measures to ban this type of funding moving forward expected to appear on the November ballot. But in some states like Wisconsin and Michigan, Democrat governors have vetoed the legislation. Why have they vetoed these bills and why do you believe the states should prioritize oversight over private money infiltrating election administration? Yeah, so I think a lot of it is what we see here today, that uh, th this issue that is a very real issue uh, is being conflated with many other uh, election integrity issues. And you can even go to another level and say potentially they see the benefits of uh, continuing this funding given uh, what we see in the election results where it has been beneficial to folks on the left. And Republicans in Congress are working to tighten election security with Representative Claudia Tenney's End Zuckerbuck's Act and Stiles' American Confidence in Elections Act. Chloe Hawkswell, One America News. For all our viewers asking where One America News is heading in the future, we would like to introduce you to OAN Live. OAN Live is the best way to stay up to date on all of the hard hitting, straight shooting, national and international headlines. And the best part is, OAN Live is only $4.99 per month. All the credible, honest, unbiased reporting One America News offers at a fraction of the cost of cable. Just go to OANN.com to easily sign up for OAN Live and stay informed.